Today we're going to explain how to time and degree a 5.0 Coyote engine out of a Mustang or a F-150 pickup truck. You're going to want to start out by placing the keyway position in the 12 o'clock position, straight up and down. That'll keep the pistons down away from the valves and allow you to turn the camshafts as needed to set up the, uh, the, the correct cam timing. Prior to starting this job, you're going to want to make sure that you have either the MMR camshaft turning tool or an adjustable crescent. This really makes the job easy by allowing you to turn the camshaft to help you line up the bolts for the camshaft sprockets. The next thing that you're going to need to do is locate the lower crankshaft gear. There's a timing mark on them that needs to be noted. That should always face out. You won't see it on the other side, so you'll know which is the correct way. Go ahead and install the timing gear by simply sliding it over the crankshaft. This particular gear is one of the MMR billet crankshaft gears. These gears are known to fail in the factory application, so any performance application should definitely suggest uh, one of these. You can see once it's installed that the timing mark is down towards the bottom at about 7 o'clock. Next we're going to look at the camshaft gears. The intake camshaft gear can be determined by just the single gear. The exhaust cam gear can be determined by the double gear, one on the inside, one on the outside. There are timing marks on each gear, one there and one right there. Those need to be lined up with the corresponding marks on the chains. You can see the chain is actually set up with two links on one end and a single link on the other. Next we're going to show the orientation of how the chain goes in regards to the marks on the uh, camshaft sprockets. You'll see that we're lining up the dark links. In the center of the dark links we have one timing mark. On the intake camshaft you'll see it lines up right in the center there. Next we're going to go ahead and install the camshaft sprockets onto the cams. Sometimes it's helpful having somebody help you uh, third hand by pushing up onto the, uh, the tensioner. Next we're going to focus on the primary cam sprockets. You're going to notice that there's an R and an L. The left is the timing mark that we're going to use for the driver side. The R is the timing mark that we're going to use for the passenger side. The chain is very similar to the secondary chain, but it has just two dark links, one on either end. Each one of those links is going to be matched up with one of the links on the or one of the marks on the camshaft sprocket. So in this step you can see that we've lined up the chain mark with the mark on the timing sprocket and we can follow this back up and we can see that the mark on the chain also lines up with the mark on the sprocket. Again, this should be the sprocket with the L for the driver's side and you'll repeat this process, but on the other side, you'll use the R for the timing mark on the sprocket. Next, we're going to install the timing chain guide. On the top, you can see the factory guide. On the bottom, you can see the MMR billet guide. In this particular case, we're going to be installing the MMR billet guide. You simply take the guide. It goes on the pivot here. A little bit of lubrication should be used. Slide it right on, and you're in place. Next, we're going to put the tensioner, which actually bolts onto these two bolts here. The next step is going to be to compress the factory tensioner. That can be done by simply placing into a vise and tightening the vise down. It will be necessary to release the ratchet mechanism, which can be done by simply putting a, uh, a pick into the uh, hole and prying the, tension, the, uh, the ratchet mechanism lock back out of the way, and then simply compressing. After you're done compressing it, a paper clip or a small piece of welding rod can be inserted into the uh, tensioner. That'll hold it in the locked, retracted position so that you can install it onto the vehicle. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the tensioner. The tensioner can just be placed into position and the screws just turned in. Once that's done, you can go ahead and remove the clip and that'll allow the tensioner to go ahead and retract out. And uh, after that step, you need to go ahead and tighten up those bolts. Once you've tightened up the bolts, you can go ahead and move down into the lower sprocket and just verify that none of your timing has slipped. Check the top and the bottom. And then repeat the same process for the other side.